My name is Roman. I am a programmer at Nginx. And one of my specializations is video streaming. So in this short talk, I will show how to stream video with Nginx. Well, these are the types of video streaming supported by Nginx. The first one is very simple. It's file download, then pseudo streaming, then HLS and HDS for mobile streaming, then live RTMP streaming. Well, on the next slides, I'll talk about this in more detail. Uh, file download is pretty simple. Uh, uh, you can just download the file and play it at client. Uh, but if the file is big, then your client has to wait long, and that is not acceptable in many cases. Uh, that's why the next technology called progressive download was uh, invented. And it's actually playing and downloading file at the same time, which is much better in many cases. But uh, with some file formats, that's not a good choice since, uh, since the data uh, uh, within the file resides in different parts. And so downloading is not a good choice. And uh, such a common video format as MP4 is actually not very suitable for progressive download. That's why uh, most modern software uh, uses MP4 partial download. What I mean by partial download is uh, downloading specific parts of an MP4 file, like metadata atom or sample chunks. Uh, so when a browser plays an MP4 file, it just uh, makes a number of requests to different parts of an MP4 file. And that is much better than anything else. So for all these uh, methods of uh, video playback, no special support is needed. It's just, in the, just implemented in, in Nginx without any additional modules. Next. Uh, progressive download has one downside. You cannot, with progressive download, you cannot seek to a random position within a file. So to solve this problem, a pseudo streaming technology is uh, uh, created, well, it differs uh, from the progressive download technology uh, with the ability to seek to a random position. And Nginx has two module modules for this. Uh, uh, it's MP4 module and FLV module. These modules were developed for uh, pseudo streaming with Adobe Flash. Uh, the MP4 module, uh, it is not built by default, and you have to add this uh, option when configuring Nginx to have the MP4 module. Uh, well, this module actually parses the MP4 metadata, and it outputs a reconstructed MP4 with all the uh, with, with its uh, sample starting at a given time of set, which is passed as an argument. Well, the FLV module is actually uh, does something similar. It is also not built by default. This option is needed. Well, it also outputs a reconstructed flash video file, uh, which uh, with uh, its data starting at a given file of set. It's not time, time position, but file of set. This is different from the MP4. Well, here's uh, an example of uh, MP4 module uh, usage. The configuration can be as simple as this. Uh, this uh, the only MP4 directive uh, enables uh, MP4 pseudo streaming in this location. And these are two examples of requests. Uh, the first request returns a reconstructed MP4 file starting at the 10th second of the source video. And the second request is, uh, does something more. It cuts the file at both ends. So it is not supported by flash, and it's just a separate feature 
which, uh, which uh, makes it possible to extract a, like any a preview or just a sub video of an MP4 file, which is quite useful. If you want to have a preview of a bigger video on your website, then this feature works just, just fine. Okay, the next one is uh, FLV module example. The configuration is very simple. Again, uh, only a single, a single directive here. And the example uh, is simple as well. Uh, uh, the Nginx receives uh, so the start, start position, which is the number of bytes from the beginning of file. That's how Flash sends this. Uh, Flash actually knows where the data starts and sends this uh, argument. Okay, this module actually works similar to HTTP range, uh, but Flash uh, wants it like, like this. Okay, I'll, everything I talked before was a part of the open source distribution, and now here is an HLS module. This is a part of the Nginx Plus distribution and Nginx Plus SMS, which stands for Streaming Media Server. Uh, HLS stands for HTTP Live Streaming. Uh, this technology was developed by Apple, and it is mo mostly used for streaming to mobile devices. And uh, the idea behind this technology is to split an MP4 file into small fragments and provide a playlist listing those fragments. Uh, uh, that's really good for mobile streaming since network conditions can be really bad and uh, a phone can lose network and then find it again and a persistent connection can break in this case. But if you have many different requests, that's okay. Well, uh, HLS is actually, is actually supported almost everywhere. It's suppo supported on iOS and Android mobile devices. It is supported natively by Safari. And there is a possibility to play it uh, from Flash. Well, uh, the input for the HLS module is an MP4 file. And the output is uh, M3 8 playlist and fragments in MPEG-TS format. Here is an example. Uh, the configuration is, uh, again, simple. The, uh, the, the HLS directive enables HLS in this location. And two uh, requests. Uh, uh, formats exist. The first one is actually a, uh, a request for an MP4 with a, an, a small addition, .m3u8. Uh, if you have, you have this addition, then uh, the, the Nginx returns a playlist. And if you have a .ts addition uh, and a start and end uh, positions, then Nginx returns a fragment in, in PEC-TS format, which is actually very uh, uh, similar to the MP4 module, but the format is different. Okay. This is an example of an HLS playlist uh, created by Nginx for a like, test file. Here you can see a maximum fragment duration in seconds and a list of fragments, well, with their durations. This is just an example to see how it looks like. Uh, well, the next one is HDS. HDS is, uh, uh, stands for HTTP Dynamic Streaming. This, uh, this uh, technology is similar to HLS, but, uh, the, uh, but it was developed by, App, uh, by uh, Adobe. Well, the, this module is, is also available in the Nginx Plus and Nginx Plus SMS. Well, the difference 
uh, between HLS and HDS is that HDS module uh, splits uh, uh, the, the whole video into f segments and fragments. Well, this module uh, requires uh, 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 segment files and segment index files, which are, should be generated by the F4F Packager 2. Well, and the output is in the video F4F type. Uh, and this is a, an example. Uh, the F4F directive enables the HDS module in this location. And the request example uh, is in the bottom of the slide. It returns the first fragment of the first segment. And it parses these files, the uh, segment file and segment index to file a, find a fragment inside a segment. Well, and uh, uh, the RCMP module. Uh, the RCMP module supports live streaming. Uh, everything I talked before was about video on demand streaming. That means if you have a static video file, just stream it to a client. And the live the RTP module supports live streaming, like uh, streaming something that is going on right now, like um, this, this conference or whatever. This model is third party, and it is included in uh, Nginx SMS Plus distribution as well. well. I am the author of this module. And to build an Nginx with uh, this module, uh, you must add this uh, option with the path to this module. Uh, the module supports uh, RCMP protocol and HLS protocol as well. And it has uh, MPEG dash experimental support. MPEG dash is something similar to HLS and HDS. Uh, it is uh, designed for mobile streaming and it splits video into small parts. That's the same idea. And uh, with live streaming, it is very important to be able to transcode the stream. Uh, when you have video on demand streaming, you can, all, uh, you can always transcode the stream and then transcode the video and then stream it. And with live video, it is very important to be able to transcode the stream. And the live uh, RTMP module provides a way to connect an external transcoder, like FFmpeg or whatever. I will show an example later. Well, it, it supports uh, uh, a number of features like HTTP event handlers, recording like video files, uh, collecting statistics and control. Uh, well, it's better to show, show an example. Well, here's a simple example of how to use the RTMP module. Since RTMP is just another protocol, it's like HTTP but different, and so there is a, a separate directive RTMP in the in the very outer scope, the top scope of the Nginx conf. Well, the internals look similar to HTTP. It's like server, listen, and application instead of locations, and. Uh, the live on directive turn, enables uh, live streaming for this location, uh, for this application, and these two directives enable HTTP live streaming. Uh, unlike uh, video on demand HLS module, which generates its uh, data on the fly, this module uh, actually stores fragments and playlists on disk, so this data should be uh, used, uh, should, be, should be served with HTTP. And here is an example how can they be served, just simple. And so the, the two uh, URLs for play, the first URL uh, is uh, the RCMP URL for playing and publishing the stream under the name MyStream. You can just publish a video to that, that URL and play it 
and play it in browser if you have Flash. And the second URL is uh, HLS URL. Uh, you can play it in browser again if your browser is Safari. Uh, and here is an example of how to transcode the stream. Uh, uh, if uh, the stream comes to this, to this application, then it's, uh, here is a directive which runs an external transcoder like ffmpeg, which uh, takes the stream from this application, transcodes it, and publishes it back under, under this name to a different application. So it's pretty simple. And uh, ffmpeg can actually do many things with the stream, like transcode, change the size, or change audio bit rates or whatever. Uh, well, and well, here the URLs of the source stream and the, the transcoded stream. Well, and actually that's all. Well, you can ask questions. Yes. Sorry, please louder. Sorry, what, what picture? You just want a single, a single picture? A single frame. A single frame. Well, now it's not possible in general, so I think it's possible. But the problem is, uh, it is, it is, it is it's possible to decode a single frame if, if it is a keyframe, but you need, you need a, uh, a library which does this decoding. And then it encodes the result in like creates a, a GIF or JPEG or whatever. So it is something more complicated. So this is not implemented, but this can be implemented. Well. Sorry? Is, 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 is. Well, this directive runs ffmpeg when a stream is published here. When a stream is published, an external transcoder is, is started, which takes the stream and does just something with the stream. Sorry? Well, if you start another stream, then you will end up with another uh, FFpeg started. And well, what is the question? Sorry. Okay, let's talk later. So, more questions? No? Then, so.